Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. So this is a really cool story. Last year at the open house, a really good dude, Tim Uhas with North Shore Fabrication came down from Indiana with his dad and they brought their flex arm to the open house. It was awesome. We set it up on, uh, on I think we had it on the Bridgeport, we had it on a table. We were tapping holes, it was really cool. I had known of flex arms and in fact, the first product I ever brought to market, I was in New York City and I'd hit the phones and I found this company in Rhode Island that did you know, heavy fabrication and I'd gone up there to their factory and they had a bunch of flex arms and that was the first time I'd seen them. This is 2006 and I was like, these things are so cool. There was just something so simple about it, but elegant and functional. And so then this all kind of came together. It was really cool. I, I think, I don't want to misspeak, I think the folks at FlexArm somehow saw the open house video footage. Maybe somebody sent it to them. Tim Uhas had mentioned it to them when they were just talking to their friends at FlexArm. And then like the same week, I was in Columbus at a trade show and FlexArm had a booth and I had met some of the people there. And it was like, it was all kind of coming together. So I had made the decision, we need a FlexArm. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. What was awesome was when this all came together, I got on the phone and we started talking and they said, look, um, why don't you come up, you're two hours away in Ohio, so they're big on made in manufacturing in America or made in America, and I was joking saying, let's push it to Ohio, but uh, you know, it was really cool. So I drove up to two hours, I got to meet everybody there, and I got to tour the factory, so we'll have some footage at the end of their factory, and pick up my flex arm. So how, how cool was that? I, uh, I will almost never say no to a factory tour, and for, for them, they're sort of retooling up with a lot more modern manufacturing equipment as they sort of grow their company in the new generation and so forth. So some interesting times for them, and I have a lot of respect for someone who's you know going through that capital planning and, and layout and just deciding what the next few years of their business is going to look like. And you know what was cool is there's a lot of young energy. Not too often that you walk into a factory and you see a ton of sharp, hungry, genuinely nice 20 and 30 year olds that are that are making stuff so that was really cool and flex arm had said hey can we get a video on your channel and i said look nobody likes a sales pitch what i wanted to do is we'll just show sort of how we use it i got this little plate machined up and we're going to go through and we've got a bunch of these quick change adapters and just throw taps in and run with it um, there's more to this that I'm not even going to get into today in terms of you can tap 080 holes or 440 holes. And one of the values of the flex arm is the quality of the spindle. And that's what threw me because I thought, why are these the price they are? And, and I understand it. And they're not for everybody. And I get it. And I'm actually really conscious of that on our channel because I love and I have this soft spot for you know, bootstrapping, scrappy, at home manufacturing, getting it done. And this is this is pushing the envelope because these are... Um, not something you're necessarily going to find in a home shop. You know, they're, they're more expensive than a lot of other things. But let me tell you, when you get to a certain point, they are indispensable. And let's talk about that for a second. And here's the one thing I will say. I've heard people complain that they're expensive. What I have not heard once, and yeah, let's comment below if you disagree. I've not heard of a single person who had one and said, yeah, you know, it kind of sits in the corner or, you know, if we sold it, I wouldn't care. They get used. I love it. Jared loves it, that's all that matters for me. But let me tell you, it is great. Uh, not only for tapping holes, and I don't have one yet, but I gotta get a Jacobs Chuck adapter for deburring. Oh my gosh, clean deburring is huge. And when it comes to tapping, it's a little bit ironic because on the Tormach, yes, you can tension compression head, and you can do that fine, but uh, I can't, I don't tension compression half 13 like this tap right here and you can't tension compression to blind holes, this thing chucks or uh, clutches out, awesome. I just don't, I've never had the confidence to be usually tapping is like the end of your run and the last thing I wanna do is scrap apart, break a tap. It's, it's both uh, disruptive from a business and operational standpoint and it's demoralizing. So tapping off offline for us is great because it reduces the risk and it's, it just feels, it's the right decision for us. When you get into bigger machines, the sales pitch is free up that machine to be doing better, more productive stuff. A lot of times you've got operators sitting in a cell or you know running a couple of different machines where they can be deburring, checking, QC, tapping parts offline. And I'm told, I'm curious to learn more about this, that rigid tapping is very, very cool, but it can be hard on spindles to start and stop that fast. And maybe that's wrong or, you know, I, I don't know, but it's certainly an interesting point.
We showed it in a video uh, a few weeks ago on a Wednesday widget where we had to tap a hole really deep. I never would have done that uh, uh, that deep a hole on the tension compression head. And what I've done in the past a lot of times is I either set it up in the bridge port or I set it up in the Tormach with a tap follower spring guide or I start it with the tension compression head only a little bit deep and then I hand do it. It's a pain in the butt. Seriously, pain in the butt. And then the other cool thing which I, we saw at the uh, Flex Arm factory is you can ream with this thing, which is something I also really want to try, which when we get a Jacob's Chuck running for this, we'll do so. And if you're a Tormach owner or you own the tension compression head, the QD adapters appear to be the same. And that was another really cool thing. When we were at the factory, they showed these things have like no run out, which again, probably may not be a huge deal for a half 13, but smaller tap sizes, it, it does matter. And that's again, part of where the quality comes from. And it just feels cool. Well, that's what I was going to mention. They were, uh, they use these things in their factory, which makes sense. And they were uh, putting, pushing these sleeves in and then reaming them to size, which I thought that's really cool because, you know, reaming is a great example where the reamer is going to follow the hole. So you, you actually want sort of a floating type thing. And a lot of times what I do is use a lighter weight vise and let the vise float and it works, but this is going to be awesome. You can see here, we've got the counterweight on this one out here so that it's you know, balanced and low weight. The units you guys might be more familiar with are the slightly bigger ones that have uh, the two exposed crossbars here and the two down here as well, like the one that Tim Uhas brought to the open house. Um, I had asked them about that one and they actually really said this one is a better fit. And here's one of the things you got to remember or, or consider is we, um, the bigger ones can't get in as close. So if you have a big area, sure, they're great, but we actually wanted to be able to get in tighter to the base and work with this table, which I think this is a great example. Again, going back to why this is an important tool for us as a one-man shop or soon a two-man shop with Jared coming on board full-time, uh, we have to be efficient. So we've got this six inch machinist vise. We've got a six inch Wilton cam lock vise, which is great for just quick size changes to quick parts. And then what we still need to do is um, drill more holes in this table to make it like an acorn table or a welding table. We might, I gotta figure out with the new shop now what we're gonna do. We might even make this a light fab table because a lot of times we're welding things up. It has to be smaller for this one. And you want to be able to, uh, you know, tap, drill, deburr, etc., uh, in place. And sorry, you can't drill with with this really as is. But what you can do, at least on the bigger flex arms, is you can put mag drills on them. Uh, totally different animal than what we're talking about here. But let me tell you, that's really cool. And one of the things we got to see at the flex arm factory was how much they do with you know, big industry, you know, big industry and designing these systems, not for tapping, but for, you know, for holding 80 pound grinders or big car parts or, or heavy assemblies for somebody that has to hold stuff all day long, having something that's counterbalanced and easy to work with. You know, this is a lot easier in my opinion than working with one of those tool danglers from the ceiling that, that, you know, kind of try to counterbalance a tool like a grinder. So let's, uh, let's take a look at tapping some holes and uh, have some fun and then take a look at some factory footage. Adjust the counterweight, make it totally weightless, if you will. You just squeeze the handle and then push the button in and it reverses. Some fluid. So the only reason it's struggling is uh, is I need to open up my airlines. You do want, um, I think it's 90 or higher PSI here. Uh, for those of you who followed the channel, you uh, you guys know this, those that don't, we uh, we are actually, this is the last video we're filming here. We filmed videos on instructional machining, manufacturing, and uh, we're moving the shop. And today's, literally, this is the last thing we're doing, and then we're going to start breaking stuff down. So when I get into the new shop, we're going to re-plumb everything and make sure we get, um, you don't want to use quick disconnect couplers. They can choke it down. Still went through just fine, but this will do half 13 in steel and this is only aluminum and it, they don't struggle but uh, let's here's what's cool now uh, this is a 3816 tap pretty easy to switch it um, this is a hand tap though and I have not used a hand tap uh, in these yet probably not a good idea you should use high quality taps and you should use taps that don't require the chip to be broken so a spiral flute or spiral point that'll either push the chip ahead or pull it back up but if we break a tap, we break a tap. Let's see what happens. All 
other than struggling a little, maybe because of the tap geometry, no problem at all. <laughs> Watch this. Now 5 sixteenths by 18. This is a spiral flute. There you go. All day long. How cool is this? Quarter 20. All the way through. That's what's cool. Swap that out. Uh, 10, 24. I would not do that normally in a machine. Awesome. Uh, let's do some blind holes to see how they work. So this this plate has um, is not dr drilled with through holes. We'll just try it with the um, five sixteenths because that's a actually decent quality tap, which which as I mentioned absolutely matters. So we'll see if this clutches out or breaks the tap. Uh, um, so I haven't adjusted all the clutches, but they come preset, and obviously a 5.16 has a lot more meat than a small tap where you would worry about the clutching out. Well, hey, we'll just try it, but that is what's awesome, is you're not going to break the tap. You can just run it straight into a blind hole, sit there and let it ratchet out, and uh, uh, the confidence of not ruining work pieces, and you know, it's easy to spend $20 on a good tap, and they're not going to break. And you're gonna have you're gonna have good holes, and as long as your fabricator can make a table that's perpendicular to the workpiece, you're gonna have square holes. Which let me tell you, if you ever tried to use one of those like homemade or jig tappers where you turn in a big handle, pain in the butt. Uh, let's see what happens with the quarter twenty. I kind of don't want to break a tap, but um, who cares? If we break a tap, we break a tap. I guess what I don't want to do is break a tap and have it be my fault and not the flex arm's fault. Whoop. Fine. Now there's a spiral flute uh, or spiral point which you're not supposed to use in a blind hole because it pushes the chip through. You're supposed to use spiral flute which pull the chip back up. But hey, let's see what happens. God. So that's it. Again, uh, we what I'd rather do than just continue this video is show you what, how we use it when we do job shop stuff, Wednesday widgets, other projects like that. You know, we would not run taps that deep uh, on the Tormach. And hey, when we get a VMC, I'll be curious to see if that changes. And we do run taps real deep. Um, obviously, thread milling is another thing, but thread mills, and I love thread milling. Don't get me wrong, but. You're talking about a hundred bucks for a thread mill, and again, uh, building machine time. You know, we've got a, a fixture plate that we make for Rimfire Steel, where we sort of hot swap them, and I'm just going to have Jared pull the one off, and then just tap those. They're already on a fixture plate. You just put it down on the table, run your holes. It'll be way faster, and the other plate can be running all the milling uh, and drilling ops while that one's getting, you know, tapped and then unloaded and reloaded. Oh, the other thing that was funny was like the day I took delivery of this. Uh, we have some a little bit of oil and gas activity picking up here in Ohio, and or at least where I am. And we had a local company that was doing a pipeline repair call us up. They had two 300-pound, 20-some inch diameter end cap plates that they needed. They had holes in them, I think, and they needed a one-inch pipe tap run into them. We couldn't run the job because we don't have any equipment big enough. We took it down to another shop with a lathe, and we dialed it in and on the lathe and, and got it done. But uh, what that made me laugh about is one of the coolest things that FlexArm also makes is the same thing, but you know, a bomb 79 size. It's the uh, hydraulic unit, and he here's some footage running. I think this is a two-inch tap. I mean, it's it's like stupid amount of power. It's it's crazy. It was really cool and. Uh, those oil and gas guys, when I said, hey, you know, what's, are you guys trying to get this done? I assume you're trying to get it done quick, and they asked if we could have the, the thing back in like two hours. Um, so price goes along with that. And when you're doing work like that, uh, let me just say that a flex arm like this will quickly pay for itself. So here's some uh, factory footage. Otherwise, enjoy, folks. Take care, and I will see you in the new shop.